Hi, my name is Corlandos, and in this unit, we'll go over properties of numbers. This math review will cover some basic terms and properties that are key to solving many GRE math problems. Some or all of these ideas may be familiar to you, and that's okay. This is just a review to remind you of things you may not have seen in a long time. Let's look at some terminology, starting with integers. An integer is a number that has no fractional part. Integers include positive and negative numbers, as well as zero. 1, 10, and negative 5 are all integers. 1 and a half and 2.35 are not integers. 0 is considered an even integer. Now let's look at integers in a quantitative comparison problem. Here's a problem. Here we see that set Z is a group of numbers consisting of negative 4, 3.75, 2, 125, 0, and 24 and 1 half. Quantity A on the left includes the number of even integers in set Z. Quantity B on the right includes the number of non-integers also in set Z. The answer choices are the same as in all the quantitative comparisons. The first choice means that quantity A is greater, while the second choice means that quantity B is greater. The third choice means that both quantities are equal, and the last choice means the relationship cannot be determined from the given information. Okay. First, we'll analyze quantity A. Let's look at the even integers in set Z, negative 4, 2, and 0. OK, I've got a pro tip for you. Here's where you need to read the question carefully to understand what you're solving. The question isn't asking you to add to get the sum of integers. It's asking you to pick the largest quantity of integers or non-integers within the group of numbers themselves. So you shouldn't add negative 4 plus 2 plus 0. You only need to count the number of integers, which is 3. Note that the question also specifies even integers only, which is why 125 is not included in our list. So on your scratch paper, write quantity A equals 3. Next, we turn our attention to quantity B. We'll identify the non-integers in set Z, 3.75 and 24 and 1 half. We find that quantity B equals 2. Looking at our answer choices, we see that the correct answer choice is that quantity A is greater. Next, let's talk about digits and factors. A digit is an individual numeral from 0 to 9 that's part of a number. So for example, the number 962 has three digits, 9, 6, and 2. On the other hand, a factor is an integer that evenly divides into the number in question. So when it comes to the number 6, it can be divided evenly by 2 3 times. So 2 is a factor of 6. 3 goes into 6 twice, so 3 is also a factor of 6. Factors pop up a lot on the test, so make sure you strengthen your understanding of them by practicing as many questions involving factors as possible. The GRE also often includes questions about prime numbers. A prime number is one that has no factors other than 1 and itself. No other numbers divide into it. Some examples are 3, 7, and 19. When we talk about prime numbers, the number 2 deserves some extra attention. 2 is the smallest prime number and is the only even prime number. Since 2 divides into all other even numbers, none of them can be prime. Now what about numbers that aren't prime? A composite number is one that has factors other than 1 and itself. Some examples are 4 with two factors of 2, 15 with factors of 3 and 5, and 27 with factors of 3 and 9. The numbers 1 and 0 are special numbers, which are neither prime nor composite. Keep in mind that 0 can never be a factor, because any number divided by 0 is undefined. Check out this multiple choice GRE style question. The sum of the first seven consecutive prime numbers is 29, 42, 50, 58, or 75. Clearly, we need to find the first seven prime numbers. Let's bust out our scratch paper and work it out. Remember, 0 and 1 are not prime, but 2 is. So our list consists of 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, and 17. Adding them together, we find that the sum is 58. The fourth answer choice is correct. Watch out. The wrong answer choices on the GRE aren't random. They're often traps that might look right if you make a simple mistake. For example, if you had mistakenly skipped 2 and started with 3 as your first prime number, then your seventh prime number would be 19. And look, these numbers added together equal 75, which is one of the answer choices. One last idea we need to brush up on is place value. 
Place value is the value of a position of a given digit in a number. Remember that each position is worth 10 times the position to its right. Let's define the values of positions with an example. We'll look at the numbers 6,723 and 149 thousandths. Written out, it looks like this. 6723.149. 9 is in the thousandths place, 4 is in the hundredths place, 1 is in the tenths place. Next is the decimal point, indicating we are moving from the fractional part of the number to the whole part of the number. 3 is in the ones place, 2 is in the tens place, 7 is in the hundredths place, finally 6 is in the thousandths place. This terminology and the basic properties of numbers will make it easy to know what certain variables within the questions mean and will enable you to spend less time on each question while getting to the root of the solution. Now you're all caught up on the basic terminology and properties of numbers, you're ready to move on to applying these new skills on some practice problems.